Our reaction is a halogen magnesium exchange. So in this reaction, an alkyl halide and an alkyl magnesium halide will come together to form a new alkyl halide and another alkyl magnesium halide. Essentially, the magnesium allows for the formation of new alkyl halides by exchanging the halogen magnesium groups. It's really similar to the Grignard reaction, which uses lithium metal in place of magnesium, but magnesium is more useful in some reactions. This is the general reaction scheme for our step of the synthesis. On the left, you can see our reactants, and on the right is our product. So in this step, a new carbon-carbon bond is formed. The two carbons involved in the formation of the bond are highlighted in green and red in the starting materials and the products, so you can see where the carbons end up. Note that the carbon in red will only be nucleophilic after the addition of the Grignard reagent. The reaction is also responsible for the creation of the important hydroxy functional group, which can be modified in later reactions. Later on in the synthesis, it will be converted to a cyano group. So what is the purpose of employing halogen magnesium exchange chemistry? Well, first off, it is a relatively new method in chemistry that was founded by Dr. Paul Nochel, and it provides a unique route in terms of synthesizing compounds and reactions. One of the most beneficial aspects of this type of chemistry is that it tolerates functional groups. Halogen magnesium exchange reactions can be used for the preparation of functionalized Grignard reagents containing reactive functional groups. As noted in the reaction scheme, this reaction takes place at negative 20 degrees Celsius to minimize any side reactions, which can be seen as a drawback, and we'll get to that a little bit later. However, in the context of the synthesis reaction, it improves the yield notably. There is a significant increase in yield observed from compound 16 between the two synthesis reactions. Through lithium halogen exchange in the first generation synthesis, there was a 25% yield of compound 16. Using a similar technique, but with a milder reagent, isopropyl magnesium chloride, in the second generation synthesis, compound 16 was afforded a 40% yield. All in all, the halogen magnesium exchange is essential in the synthesis of the 4B prodrug. Adding a protecting group in the trimethylsilyl to protect the amine allows the magnesium chloride to replace the iodine. Ultimately, this is what propels the reaction in the direction we want it to go. So, now that we have gone over what halogen magnesium exchange is and why we should use it. Now we're going to discuss what the downsides to it are. One of the major downsides is that it is a super temperature dependent reaction. When doing Grignard reactions, they are typically temperature dependent. Some need to be very hot, while others need to be very cold. And in this case, it had to be kept at a cryogenic temperature around negative 20 degrees Celsius. If this isn't properly adhered to, the whole reaction can be a bust. Now the major downside to it being so cold is that it's going to take a lot of energy to keep that reaction cold for a long period of time if done on a large scale. And this is where the cost versus benefit discussion is going to come into play. Another downside is that it has a fairly low yield. The paper goes on to discuss how when they added the chemicals number 14 and 20 to make chemical 16, they really only had about a 40% yield, and that yield was pretty inconsistent over the several trials that they did. Lastly, a major problem that they had was the premature quenching. This was because it took a while for the NBuLi to add itself into the reaction. And the researchers would quench the reaction too early, and it completely destroyed the reaction. And the premature quenching and reduction of that litho base occurred, which it was just a consequence consequence of deprotonation of the chemical A to the lactone in the highly basic conditions under which they were doing the reaction. The first step in this reaction is the protecting step, where the trimethyl CO chloride group is added. After the addition of isopropyl magnesium chloride and lactone, Horizon 4 amine is added first. It has a molar equivalent of 1 and acts as a nucleophile in the reaction. Tetrahydrofuran is added first also. It is the solvent and added in excess. Next, trimethyl CO chloride is added with the molar equivalent of 2. It serves as a protecting group in the reaction. Then, phenyl magnesium chloride is added. It is the molar equivalent of 2 and serves as a Grignard reagent, and in this case, a deprotonating agent. 
After that, isopropyl magnesium chloride lithium chloride complex is added at a molar equivalent of 25.1. It is a turbo Grignard reagent in the reaction. Lastly, ribonolactone is added with a molar equivalent of 1 and it serves as the electrophile. This next slide talks about some notable and interesting details we found about halogen magnesium exchange. For this reaction, the addition of lithium chloride to the Grignard reagent isopropyl magnesium chloride produces a more active halogen magnesium exchange. It is referred to as a turbo Grignard reagent and greatly enhances the rate for the bromine bond and the iodine magnesium bond. Some research has proposed that lithium chloride breaks up aggregates of organomagnesium reagents. Also, for this reaction, it's slowed down by electron donating groups and accelerated by electron withdrawing groups. The presence of a chelating agent, which are chemical compounds that react with metal ions to form a stable water soluble complex, where the ortho group increases the rate of reaction in lower temperatures. Also, the iodine being exchanged must be ortho to the nitro group, otherwise the products at the end become mixed. In summary, the magnesium halogen exchange has opened many new doors, such as Dr. Paul Nagel has recently discovered this method in chemistry, which has become the preferred method for the preparation of highly functionalized organomagnesium. Grignard reaction can run to completion, forming the carbon-carbon bond between the two molecules. Subsequently, the authors allowed the mixture to warm to zero degrees Celsius and quench the reaction in methanol to stop the reaction completely. However, in order to realize the final product of this step of the synthesis, deprotection still has to occur that the trimethylsilyl group that served as the protecting group needs to be removed from the nitrogen atom and the nitrogen needs to be protonated to reform the amine group. In order to accomplish this, the authors used mild acidic conditions by adding a dilute acetic acid or acetic acid and water into the mixture at room temperature. This, in addition to the THF solvent already present, creates the conditions for acidic deprotection and removal of the TMS group, as well as reprotonation of the nitrogen. This could also potentially be accomplished by the use of a stronger acid, a base, or fluoride ion producing compounds, though acetic acid is known for its utility and its capacity to be selective, albeit slow, in deprotection. The authors then followed this with a standard procedure to separate the product in an ethyl acetate layer, dry it with anhydrous sodium sulfate, and concentrate it under reduced pressure to isolate it. Added to the amine group coming off the ring. This prevents the amine group from reacting when the turbo Grignard reagent is added. This reaction releases protons, so phenyl magnesium chloride is added to pick up the protons it releases. Phenyl magnesium chloride is a strong base, and as a magnesium halogen exchange reagent, it is less reactive than isopropyl magnesium chloride, so it won't react at the iodine group. The isopropyl magnesium chloride lithium chloride complex is then added once the amine is protected to replace the iodine with magnesium chloride. The ribonolactone is then added now that our nucleophile is activated. The final step is the reaction workup. 